Hi, in this video, we'll introduce you to Whitebox Cryptography and we will demonstrate our tool support for this protection. This protection was contributed by Nagravision. The security requirement that we want to meet with Whitebox Crypto is confidentiality of cryptographic keys. Specifically, we want to prevent that the key occurs in the program or that the key even occurs in memory or in traces collected of a program being executed. And actually, we even want to go further. Not only should the key itself not occur, but from the code and the data that does occur, it should be impossible to extract the key from the program. Now, there are two forms of white box cryptography that we support in the project. The first concerns static key algorithms. In this case, the original program contains a function to perform a cryptographic primitive, in this case, AES encoding, and this function is fed a key. So obviously, the key will occur in the program. The goal of Whitebox Crypto protection is to replace this function call by another function call that only has the plain text in this case as argument and the key, instead of occurring as an argument, it should be embedded in the code and the data that implements the function. We also have dynamic key algorithms. In that case, a form of obfuscated key is received from a server and that obfuscated key is still passed to a, uh, in this case, an encryption routine. And so the goal here is that this encryption routine can perform the encryption with the original key, but the attacker only gets to see the obfuscated key. And from that and from the code and the data already in this function, he should not be able to reconstruct the original key. Now the tool support that we developed to support these algorithms are as follows. First, we're going to extract annotations from our source code, then uh, a tool uh, interfaces with the actual white box tools from Nagravision. So the white box tool for Aspire functions as an interface to the proprietary uh, white box tools from Nagra. And those tools work by means of plugins. So for different uh, encryption primitives and versions of white box crypto, they have white box code generators. It are these generators that generate the white box crypto versions of the encryption primitives. For dynamic crypto, these generators also uh, generate the send functionality, the receive functionality, and then the dynamic key white box crypto routine. Once this code has been generated, uh, the code in the original application needs to be rewritten. And so we have a last step here. So basically this rewriting step uh, transforms code like this into code like this in your program. Let's now look at an example and see how this works in practice. So here we are in our development environment. Let's have a look at some code that we want to protect with Whitebox Crypto. You can see that two arrays, input and output, are labeled as the inputs and outputs of cryptographic primitives. You can also see here that there is a key that currently is statically allocated. You see its value here. Now, in this case, uh, this is an ASCII string. Keep this secret. If you know ASCII, you know these uh, characters here. And this is defined to be the key in a white box crypto operation. And then further down in the program, you see an actual uh, invocation of an encryption routine. In this case, the key is still passed to this function. And uh, you see that we added pragmas to indicate that this uh, function call should be replaced by a white box crypto operation that implements AES in ECB mode. It's a decryption and uh, the data to be used has this label. You see this label occurring here, here and here. Now, I've prepared two configuration files for our toolchain, one to skip Whitebox Crypto and one to deploy it. And so if you look at the difference between the two files with Vimdiv, you see here that in the no Whitebox Crypto version, we're actually going to skip the Whitebox Crypto uh, step by simply traversing it. That means that all the input uh, of that step is directly copied to the output. However, with this configuration file, you see that this step is not traversed, which means that it's actually just executed. Now let's uh, invoke our toolchain on the code. So first I'm building a version without Whitebox Crypto. There are also some other protections uh, deployed in this case like anti-cloning and that's why a whole bunch of libraries are included. Uh, let me also invoke the Whitebox Crypto version. You see that this takes longer because here uh, actually the Whitebox Crypto code is being generated. So the big tables and the code. Okay, so also this version has been generated. Then if I look in the build directory, you see that there are uh, two versions built. That's what we just did. Now, what's the difference between those two versions? 
let us maybe look at the version without Whitebox Crypto. You see the application code and some protection code uh, was compiled. If we do this for the Whitebox Crypto code, you see actually that Whitebox Crypto functions have been generated as well. And you see that this big file has been generated. This is the one that stores big tables that implement the Whitebox Crypto and in which the key is embedded. If we then look for the data in the actual compiled applications, so in this case, first the Whitebox Crypto version, you see that we have a rather large uh, read-only data section. If we do this in the uh, no Whitebox Crypto version, you see that the data section is much smaller. That's of course because these large tables are not included in that binary. Then if we look for the, the key itself, I'm searching here for the words keep and secret and because that was the ASCII string of uh, the key. You see that keep uh, occurs a bunch of times, uh, but not in the string keep this uh, secret. Uh, this is in the white box crypto version, so it has effectively been removed. Uh, if we look in the version without white box crypto, you see immediately that uh, keep this secret is still present there in the binary. Now, unfortunately, I cannot show any of the code implementing the white box crypto or the data tables themselves. That's confidential, but you get the picture. There's one thing I can show you, however, that's the source code, the original source code that contained the crypto primitive. Now this is pre-processed code. But if you look at the function where we previously had the pragmas, you see that the original invocation of the decryption routine is replaced by a new one. There is no key present here. No key is fed to this function, only the input and output buffers and the buffer size. And you see also in the code itself, uh, while the input and output arrays are still defined, the key has disappeared from the program. Okay, that's it.